So we're gonna do a surgical airway with this true core mannequin, emphasizing the critical points of the laryngeal handshake, sternal stabilization, making a vertical incision first, verifying the location, rotating around to horizontal, and then putting our finger in the hole after we've made the incision through the cricothyroid membrane, and then passing a tube and a bougie into the airway. First off, it's important to be on the right side of the patient. I am right hand dominant. I don't think I could do this procedure with my non-dominant hand. I want to be to the patient's right. I want to be holding the scalpel in a manner where it's close to the blade. I want my hand to be stabilized on the patient's sternum. So I'm not in space like this, but that I've got what I call sternal stabilization. So we start with a laryngeal handshake, which is moving the hyoid, thyroid, and cricoid cartilage, this rhomboid set of structures. We rock the larynx from side to side. We feel where the broad thyroid lamina is. And then come down a little bit, and here's the cricoid. But I don't need to know exactly where the cricothyroid membrane is. I'm just rocking the rhomboid. But I'm identifying midline. I then stabilize with my non-dominant hand. Notice I'm using one and three, because number two is going to verify where the CTM, where the cricothyroid membrane is, after I make the vertical incision. I pick up the blade, choke up so I don't have a lot of distance, rest my hand on the sternum. I make this vertical incision from about mid-thyroid down over the cricothyroid and just onto the beginnings of the trachea. Now, this incision point at that point is not or this incision, rather, is not very aggressive. It's just through the skin. But what it does, is it, it allows my index finger of my non-dominant hand to explore that space. The cricothyroid membrane is a little soft space between the thyroid cartilage above and the cricoid cartilage below. The trachea has a water bottle softness descending into the cernal notch. The thyroid, if I go out laterally, is broad and flat. So once I've convinced myself where the cricothyroid membrane is. With my hand still resting on the sternum, I horizontally enter the cricothyroid membrane and I bring the blade towards me. I then flip the blade over and I go away. But I've made this incision and I take out my, uh, I take out my knife and I've made the incision large enough for me to get my finger in the hole. And this is a very important piece because without having your finger in the hole and knowing it's large enough, you may not be able to pass the tracheal tube in. A common error of this procedure is people make too small a hole and then they start shoving things in which don't go into the trachea but instead go subcutaneous. But my finger's in the hole and I can feel it. I take my bougie and you can go right to a tube here if you want, but I'm gonna take the bougie and I'm gonna pop this in and now I'm taking my 6-0 tracheal tube and I'm going to railroad it down. But I think in terms of sequence, it's important that we go scalpel, finger, and then tube or bougie. Because if you don't do that, and there's a little bit of resistance here with this rubber, but if you don't do scalpel, finger, bougie, um, the, the hole that you've made may not be big enough to accept the tracheal tube. Now, on placement, this is 16 centimeters. The cuff has disappeared. We're already below the cords. It's only 11 centimeters from cords to carina, so don't over-insert. So looking back here, 16, the cuff is in. It's far enough. I then take out the bougie. We would blow up the cuff. Remember, and then I would stabilize this the way I do a chest tube, basically securing it, tying it to the skin, with multiple wraps around the tube. Remember, post-procedure, if your patient decompensates, sometimes air can dissect down and you can get a pneumothorax. So always double check if the patient decompensates after this procedure, A, that you're in, but B, that you haven't over-inserted, and lastly, that you don't have pneumothorax. But the key pieces of this procedure are to understand the cartilaginous cage so that you're not cognitively crippled uh, to appreciate the importance of the vertical incision first, verifying the membrane while cutting to sternal stabilize your hand, and then 
use a small tube. In this case, I used a 6.0, but that has a small outer diameter. Making sure your finger goes in the hole widens it before you then place the tube and making sure you don't over-insert it.